Hello everyone, welcome to the video on most important adverse effects of chemotherapeutic drugs. Now I will give the list of most important adverse effects. Please prepare notes regarding this so that it will be easy for you to revise all these adverse effects. Let us see class by class. First one penicillins. Now see any drug which contains sulfur atom in its structure may cause allergy or hypersensitivity. The severe form of this hypersensitivity may, may cause Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, penicillins in the penicillin class, ampicillin may cause a particular condition known as pseudomembranous colitis. Now, this is because of super infection. When people take ampicillin for a period of time, the gut bacteria will die, and in the gut, there is an organism known as uh, Clostridium difficile. The Clostridium difficile population may increase, and that may cause pseudomembranous colitis. That means colon inflammation occurs, and a pseudomembrane will form on the colon. The condition is called a pseudomembranous colitis. So pseudomembranous colitis is caused, caused by ampicillin, cephalosporins, clindamycin and fluoroquinolones also. So the important things with related to penicillin you need to remember they cause allergy or hypersensitivity. The severe form is known as Steven Johnson syndrome and pseudomembranous colitis. Now the next one, sulfur drugs. Now sulfonamides, there are multiple problems are there. The older generation sulfonamides used to cause crystal urea. That means in the urinary tract, they used to form crystals and that is what is called as crystal urea. Neonates should not be given sulfonamides because sulfonamides bind with albumin and displaces bilirubin. The displaced bilirubin may cause neonatal jaundice known as carnectaris. Sulfonamides may also cause Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, in patients with, in people with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, G6PD deficiency, sulfur drugs will cause hemolysis. Sulfur drugs also cause phototoxicity. So five of the major problems are there. Crystal urea, carnectaris, hypersensitivity or Steven Johnson syndrome, hemolysis and phototoxicity. Now moving to the next group, fluoroquinolones. As I told you already, fluoroquinolones will cause pseudomembranous colitis. Along with that, they have another problem called as tendonitis. Itis means inflammation, tendon inflammation. Now the next drug is vancomycin. Vancomycin is, is cell wall inhibitor. Vancomycin may cause ototoxicity and flushing. Flushing is because vancomycin, when it is given with a rapid infusion, it will release histamine. Histamine release causes vasodilation and redness will be there. That is called as flushing. Along with it, it causes hearing impairment. That is called as ototoxicity. Now, after vancomycin, uh, the next class is aminoglycosides. Now, aminoglycosides has got three major adverse effects are there. Neurotoxic, nephrotoxic, ototoxic. Neurotoxicity may affect neuromuscular junction and movement problem may occur. So these are all the problems with aminoglycosides. Now the next class is macrolides like erythromycin, uh, azithromycin, all of them. Now macrolides, the major problem is acute cholestatic hepatitis or jaundice. Cholestasis means the movement of bile is blocked that may result in jaundice. Now after that you have chloramphenicol. We all know chloramphenicol, the major problem is it causes gray baby syndrome. It causes a particular condition known as blood dyscrasias. RBC formation will be reduced. Especially it is very effective in young children because chloramphenicol will not metabolize easily. The unmetabolized drug will get accumulated and causes blood dyscrasias which is known as grey baby syndrome. The next class is tetracycline. Now tetracycline, see the, all of you know that tetracycline should not be given along with milk or curds. The multivalent ions will form chelated bond with tetracyclines. That means calcium, aluminum, magnesium also form bonds with uh, tetracycline. So calcium we have in bones and teeth. So when young children are taking these tetracyclines, they reabsorb calcium from bone and teeth. That will cause teeth discoloration, tetracyclines. Now, not only that, the other problem with tetracyclines, they also cause phototoxicity. The next one is expired tetracycline may, cause, may damage kidney and that results in a syndrome called as Fanconi syndrome. So this is about tetracyclines. Now after that uh, we have anti-malarial uh, drugs like quinine. Quinidine may cause a particular problem known as synchronism. Synchronism is characterized by tinnitus, ringing bells in ears, auditory and visual problems and psychosis too. Now another anti-malarial drug like primaquine, the major problem is primaquine will also cause hemolysis in patients with G6PD deficiency. See, G6PD deficiency people will get hemolysis when they use sulfur drugs like sulfonamide, dapsone and primaquine. Now, uh, coming to anti-tubercular drugs like isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, they cause 
hepatitis, inflammation of hepatic cells or liver damage. Now, isoniazid will cause peripheral neuritis. Uh, ethambutal will cause ac visual acuity problem. Colors differentiation will be a problem for them. Rifampicin will cause orange coloration of body secretions and flu-like symptoms. Now, uh, amphotericin. Amphotericin is antifungal agent. Amphotericin also cause ototoxicity. Now, coming to anti-cancer uh, drugs adverse effects. See, I have made an exclusive video on cytotoxic anti-cancer agents adverse effects. There, there are a flurry of common adverse effects are there. They cause alopecia, loss of hair fall, mucositis, oral mucosa inflammation, severe nausea and emesis, myelosuppression, tumor lysis syndrome, gout kind of problem, thrombophlebitis. For in detail explanation, watch that video which is there in my channel. Now, leaving that, the exclusive selective toxicities uh, uh, from some of the anti cancer drugs are like cyclophosphamide, diphosphamide may cause hemorrhagic cystitis. So, urinary cyst will have bleeding that is called as hemorrhagic cystitis. Now peripheral neuritis is also caused by vincristine and cisplatin drugs. Now busulfan bleomycin may cause pulmonary fibrosis, lung damage will be there. Now leaving this, some of the drugs which are used to treat steroidal induced cancers like breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, like uh, certain drugs will cause gynecomastia. Gynecomastia means in men there is a development of mammary mammary gland kind of things that is called as gynecomastia. Now this is caused by drugs like gonadotropic releasing hormone, agonist and antagonist, 5-alpha reductase uh, inhibitors which are used to treat prostate cancer and uh, antiandrogens like flutamide, nilutamide, bicalutamide all of them will cause gynecomastia. Along with that spironolactone which is a diuretic, potassium sparing diuretic and antifungal agents like ketoconazole they also cause gynecomastia. Now, some other drugs causes hot flashes. Hot flashes uh, uh, you see during menstruation or premenstrual syndrome. Hot flashes is caused by selective estrogen, estrogen receptor modifying agents like tamoxifen, clomiphene, raloxifen. So, all these are specific adverse effects of chemotherapeutic agents. Thank you for watching this video.